What is up, everybody? Mystery Grill here. Hi! Welcome back to something that we haven't done for in months, and I'm glad it is fine. I am finally able to play this again. The Fruit of Grisaya! Oh, after so much of going through everything that we went through together, I finally was able to get it back to where it was supposed to be. So, let's get back into this. So, where we left well was a hobby is a window that gives you a fresh perspective on the world, or so my sister said. Once I was able to get to that line, I was happy to finally be able to record again. <laughs> so, let's go on. But when I was a kid, struggling through my daily life was all was about all I could handle. I disliked and avoided changes, change, even when it might have brought me something new. So my sister's recommendation was to at least try reading books. That sister of mine was unbelievably or voracious bookworm herself, and she began to push the one she finished on me. I soon picked up a reading habit, although I didn't find any particular meaning in it at the time. My sister is dead now, and as are my parents and my master, yet I'm still reading. The sister who taught me to read books, the parents who weren't angry at me when I was reading books, and the master who praised me for reading books, buying me as many as I wanted. I'm grateful to them now, since I've found some meaning in the act of reading. -kun. Oh, Miko. Ima, hmm. Guess we have a moment with you. Yeah? I turn around in response to Yumiko's greeting and find her carrying a sizable load of paperback and hardcover books. Sure, appreciate it as always. As anyone with a long term reading habit is aware of, books pile up before you know it. That said, it's hard to just throw them away, and selling them to a used bookstore feels disrespectful to the author. The ideal is to find another avid reader, reader to dump them on. <laughs> Incidentally, before I came, Sakaki had apparently been pushing the books she finished onto the library. By now, she's established her own private shelf in there, full of pleasure reads. Most likely, she spotted me by coincidence as she was carrying her books there and figured she could save herself the walk. Heavy right here. I slide my hands under the books Kaki is carrying. Watch it, don't take your hands off yet, the books are going to fall. What? Oh, of course it is. Don't worry, my hygienic standards are higher than you might expect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's blessing. So you complain too much. All right, I've got a hold on them. You can let go. That's so. Anyway, I'll rightfully read the books when I finish one. I'll return it to the Sakaki collection. So if you want to reread any of them, they'll be in the library. Yeah. They're up there, Grandma. I will get them in a minute. Yeah. I take a quick look at the titles of the book I'm holding. Suhi Aki, The Detect Decisive Pudding Battle, Kumabata Takiru, Yesterday's Black Cat, Hirayu, Atsuki, The Exit of the Desert. Sino Takumi, Professor Takeda's dinner, dinner, Ethan Pro, an insolent woman, Shinome Katsuma, you blew it, Mori. Although she reads quite a variety of genres and authors, it seems that Sakaki automatically likes it. Of the six books she passed me for mysteries. Come to think of it. I could easily see Sakaki sitting at a detective desk, using her brains for a living. Flipping open one of the books, I speak toward the shadow of a nearby pillar. Makina, how long do you plan on hiding there? <laughs> I didn't know Makina was there! Oh my gosh! 
I'm not mad or anything. How about you come out? Your aura is too crude. I can sense you even when you're hidden. <laughs> I just said that for the heck of it. You were casting a shadow on the floor. I could tell it was you from the height and the sh shaggy head. Pretty much. Why were you hiding in the first place? Oh, how sweet! You don't get along with Sakaki? That actually kind of makes sense considering Sakaki actually attacked us before she got along with us. Hmm. On the other hand, I'm pretty sure Sakaki said something like, I think Irisu Sans avoids me on purpose. You're in the state of a mutual awareness. Well, I suppose that does happen sometimes. Sakaki, a guarded person who doesn't reveal her thoughts easily, and Makina, who feels most secure when she's borrowed her way into someone's heart, their personal comfort zones may be incompatible. Well, it's foolish to expect everyone to get along with everyone else in the entire world. There's no need to forcibly push these two together. But at the very least, maybe a mutual compromise is called for. I don't think Saka Sakaki dislikes you, Makina, so try not to hate her yourself. Okay, that kind of makes sense. I see. That's a good question. Well, it's not like we're particularly close, but we have a common interest in books, so I guess that helped get things started. Of course, I get the idea Sakaki mostly views me as a little more than a convenient book disposal. After all, it's hard to say you're friendly with someone who scowls so bluntly just because your hands touch. Makina, do you have any hobbies? Hmm. So, yeah. Okay, solo? That's not good. Hmm? No, also, no. At the company I work at, solitary hobbies are fundamentally discouraging. Discourage. They place a lot of stress on keeping up some form of communication with others. When it comes to the interests of the employees, the basics are alcohol, women, and gambling. But it's a bit difficult to own up to that in front of the boss. Therefore, when asked, some one of them just came up with a safe-sounding, convenient hobby like shogi or go. When the superiors reacted favorably to the answers, the end result was that the hobbies column in the employee surveyed data recorded an overwhelming number of shogi buffs. Although going with the flow is pretty much defining Japanese characteristic, it's still something of a pathetic story. Well, having given them a nice safe hobby, like reading myself, I guess I can't really say too much. Huh? Nothing, just talking to myself. Incidentally, once you're the one giving the surveys out, in other words, an executive type, the hobby of choice would be gardening. <laughs> Not something you can do when you're living out of a barracks. Yeah, it's better to have some interest than not, even if they're really worthless. For example, the aforementioned 
employees in their wine, woman and soul. Even then, if they can help you find a single common interest with someone, your hobbies are worthwhile as social lubricant, even if they're worthless in every other respect. This is something I heard secondhand from a senior employee at my job, but sometimes you get cases like this. This is a story about a man who took a business trip to Gifu Prefecture. It was a group expedition with a purpose of field testing new equipment that had just been deployed throughout his company. Wow, okay. At the time, the man in question was a new employee, not even out of his training period. Nonetheless, he found himself taking a long, bumpy ride into the mountains on a company bus, accompanied by the chief of his special department. The man didn't have the first clue why he had been selected for the trip, let alone what he'd be expected to do on it. To make matters worse, he was sitting next to a powerful superior he barely knew. In short, the man was about ready to vomit from sheer terror and anxiety. He fought desperately to keep calm, but his face was pale as a sheet. The bus finally reached its destination at the foot of Mount Kinka in Gifu after many unpleasant hours. But the man's relief was temporary as his boss informed him that they would be attending a large banquet in a high-class inn that night. Corporate banquets are basically a cruel kind of talent show. New employees were expected to perform some skills for the amusement of the gathered VIPs. The newbies from each department mounted the stage one after the other. Quite a few croaked out popular karaoke ballads with stiff faces, but there were also some pretty competent juggling acts. Even one standing up stand-up comedy duo which got some laughs doing imitations of superiors. The man watched the others act with a fluttering heart. His turn was approaching fast, but it was basically a walking brief lump of artistic incompetence and a social type without a single talent worth performing in front of others. This is he was wondering whether he could escape by pretending a sudden Ill illness, the man was practically kicked out onto the stage by the senior employees. For a lack of better thought, he started to sing. The man didn't know any popular songs. Worse, he couldn't remember any of the standard folk songs or children's music that might work. The man went instead with a theme song from the superhero TV show Lightspeed General M. Makara, which he'd loved as a kid. By this point, he couldn't help but feel a growing sense of despair. This was, of course, the man's first time singing in public, and he didn't have much of a voice. Within moments, he was shooed and showered in cheers from the audience. The heck are you singing? What's with you? Hey, idiot! Are you just making that up on the spot? That's enough! Get off the stage! You suck! Though he wasn't the type to break down in tears, the man felt the deep urge to dig himself a hole and crawl into it. Only sheer stubbornness carried him through the last humiliating note. When it was over, the man quickly bowed from the stage and raced back to his seat. On that walk back from the stage, the man had thought, I wish I'd learned a popular song or two. I eat Mm, well, if you look at it that way, you're right. But the story isn't over yet. With the equipment test wrapped up, the man had to return to his new assignment at a branch office in Shizuoka. Someone called out to him as he was dealing with the transfer paperwork. So you were the newbie saying it didn't act. Off at the banquet in Gifu, the man's breath caught in his throat. He figured out by now that the main job of his superiors was to flaunt their authority by picking at the smallest mistakes, then rubbing his nose in them. And the manager speaking to him was infamous for his zealous leadership of his underlings. Frankly, the man was about ready to go in his pants. He swallowed and chewed his lips, better thoughts running through his head. What's he gonna... What's he going to blame on me? How long will I have to grovel? But the manager's words took him by surprise. I loved that show when I was a kid! 
Man blinked, dumbfounded by the this unexpected development. You're you from Hiroshima, kid? According to the manager, Dama Goroff, reruns were played relentlessly every week and afternoon on the, the local station. In other words, particularly every child in Hiroshima grew up watching the show. But the man wasn't a Hiroshima native. In the area he lived in as a child, the children's encore theater program would broadcast old episodes of the show every summer. He just happened to see a few. And so the manager must have been really pleased to find a fellow Yamakura fan as he began to pull a few strings to the man's benefit. One night after work, the man returned to his bed in the company dorm to find that a white plastic bag had been tucked underneath the sheets on his neatly made bed. He didn't remember putting it there himself, and when he asked around, nobody else had any idea where it had come from. The bag contained a huge jelly roll and a cup of instant ramen. As a new employee, the man had to eat dinner at a set time of 5 p.m. By 10 p.m. lights out time at the dorm, all of the trainees would be starving. This supplement meal was therefore a very considerable present. The man had an idea who was responsible, most likely his Damakaroff buddy at the top was the only one who could have pulled it off. On top of the early dinner time, learning the ropes as a trainee is particularly tiring. His dim Makarov buddy had probably figured he'd have a hard time getting his young body to fall asleep on an empty stomach. The man actually didn't have a particular big appetite and wasn't the type to be troubled by irregular meals. But then again, as a new employee, he didn't have much money he could spend freely on snacks and such. A little sugar was extremely welcome. If I get caught, they'll get punished too. So the man split the smuggled food with the other trainees in his room, and they all devoured their shares greedily. As the presents from this Demakarov buddy, at the time they were known as Demakarov Supply Drop, continued that countless, quiet, and hopeless triplet threat contender for the social, a social crown suddenly found himself getting along with the group in the dorm, all thanks to the Demakarov connection. <laughs> and three months later, when the man's training team to an end, was once again his demographer buddy whose recommendation got him assigned to the Chiba branch office he'd hoped for. In other words, when it comes to hobbies and interests, anything is fine. Finding friends you can talk about some common interest with is a really valuable thing. Sometimes something that small can be the trigger for gaining a huge leg up in life. That's the moral of the story. <gasps> <laughs> That's funny. I thought this was a pretty meaningful story. I guess it didn't quite get across. Well, more or less. When you're young, you should mess around with all sorts of things. Just try to find something that grabs you. Even if it's stupid crap. After all that spacing out, that's a pretty sharp question. I glance down towards the pile of borrowed books I'm holding in my hands. I suppose right now I don't have anything other than reading that qualifies. You aren't really listening to a word I say, are you? Well, not to say that you need to. <laughs> Go get a money to make something. Yeah, if I'm in the mood. So cute. I see. I learned my own lesson from this conversation. If there's a mention of food in the middle of the story, Makana won't remember another word. I'll have to put m be more careful next time. And we're going to end the episode right there, guys. Holy crap. I am so super excited. I want to see this. this. Um, during my middle school days in America, I got a number of strange nicknames from my classmates. Okay, so we're going to end that there. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you guys are enjoying it this series more. Again, there's a whole playlist of the whole series so you guys can catch up with. If you 
never watched this Fruit of Versailles before, I have a whole playlist for you guys to watch. And I will be getting more and more of those out of the way now that I've been able to finally get them started. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you all later. Stay frosty! Bye, see you next time.